guys keep asking for uh, build guides and uh, that sort of thing, especially after the VR build guide, which I'll leave a card up above if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, but basically, this one is an ITX build guide. Now, technically, it is still VR ready, especially because we're using a GTX 1060 6 gig card. But uh, yeah, it's an ITX build guide. We've got a Cooler Master Elite 110, which is basically the smallest case they do. You also have a Gigabyte Z170N Gaming 5 ITX motherboard and an ITX Gigabyte graphics card. We also have a full 120mm uh, liquid cooler, which is actually pretty awesome. And a full size power supply because that's what this case actually takes, which is quite surprising. Other than that, uh, we've got a, a little bit of RAM and SSD down the corner. And in terms of tools, it's very simple. Just need a screwdriver. I personally have a couple of sizes just for ease of use. And also have a knife to be able to open all the boxes and that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, basically this is going to be a full build guide. So if you want to know what these parts look like, uh, you know, together and how they go together well, or uh, just generally speaking, if you want to know how to build an ITX PC or a PC in general, then this video should definitely help you on that uh, and we're also going to be benchmarking the system once it's built so you can see how it performs too so yeah I guess that's kind of it really um, let's uh, just get on and build it So from the accessories bag, you're going to want to grab these gold standoffs that are going to go in these uh, basically uh, raised mounting holes. Now they're fairly simple to install and generally I recommend at least starting them off by hand, but uh, in these Coolmaster cases you'd also get this uh, Phillips head tool, which is sort of like a, a socket that you can place them in to tighten them up. I generally use that just to secure them at the end, but I personally recommend using your hand for the first sort of uh, few turns just to get it in nice and easy. So the next thing you want is the IO shield which is going to go in the back. Now make sure it goes the right way around so these bigger connectors and that sort of thing are generally at the bottom and obviously the writing is the right way up. Uh, and it basically just snaps in from the inside. Uh, the hole you want is at the bottom and it should be fairly simple. Just sort of follow along I guess. I'm just going to remove this power supply bracket and mount the power supply to it but I'm not going to put the power supply inside the case yet as the motherboard sits underneath the power supply uh, which is going to impede us actually putting the motherboard in and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to do that first then probably the CPU cooler and the graphics card and then we'll put the power supply in and hook everything up and that sort of thing. So uh, let's do that one first. So this bracket has a label top on it, now I'm actually going to put the fan facing downwards uh, in this uh, case, haha <laughs> bad pun, um, because uh, this the fan's going to sit directly over the CPU and over the motherboard uh, and because this is going to be exhausting air at the back it just gives an extra effectively exhaust fan especially since the case just doesn't have one so hopefully that will uh, basically just help out a little bit. So I just realized this fan actually needs to be removed as the cooler that we have is going to be mounted uh, here uh, and it's actually going to be, uh, it comes with its own two fans to sit either side of the radiator so uh, we're going to need to remove this one first and then we're going to mount the motherboard. So before we put the motherboard in the uh, case, we're going to put the CPU in the motherboard. Now just to make it uh, clear, obviously the CPU does come in its protective case, just keep it in there until you're ready to install it, and also keep this plastic cover over the socket so that you don't damage any, any of the pins. But one thing I want to make clear is that there's a small triangle in the bottom left hand corner of the socket, uh, as well as when you push the sort of lever down and lift it up, there's also a small triangle uh, on the bottom of the actual uh, PCB, there's also a small gold triangle on the bottom left hand corner of the CPU and if you can't tell that's just so that you match them up the right way. 
Otherwise, all you have to do is take the case, uh, CPU out of its case. Just be very careful, hold it by its side generally. You definitely don't want to touch the pins on the back as they are the place where, well, the CPU is conducting electricity. Uh, obviously, you connect into the uh, motherboard and basically you just line it up and gently place it in. Um, you don't want to be touching the uh, pins in the socket either. And then once it's in and once it's located nicely, uh, you just pull the uh, sort of cover back down. Don't worry about the plastic cover as that will pop itself off and uh, completely ruin the rest of the board. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. There's your CPU installed uh, with no worries. So just a couple quick notes before we put the motherboard in the case. I realized that because the case doesn't have a CPU cutout like uh, many other sort of ATX type cases do, we're gonna need to put the back plate on the motherboard before we put it in. Uh, and we're also, uh, just as a another note, because this uh, motherboard is ITX and is very small, only has two fan headers, we need one of those fan headers for the water cooling pump, uh, and then that only leaves another one fan header for the other fan. We would uh, be able to use a second one if the uh, sort of cooler came with a four pin PWM splitter, but unfortunately it didn't, so we're only gonna be using one, which actually means that we only have to install one set of screws, which is kind of quite nice, but. Uh, yeah, just uh, wanted to, to make sure you knew about that as this uh, CPU cooler does come with two fans It just doesn't come with a splitter to make the uh, two fans connect to one uh, sort of header on the motherboard when installing these uh, back plates, basically you look for the Intel logo in this case uh, and then you use the outer sort of square uh, mounting uh, set uh, and you just basically have the Intel logo facing outwards so that there is a little bit of space between the back plate and the uh, screws and then you just push one of the screws through and push the plastic clip over uh, until for 11.50 or 11.50 uh, one, it's in the uh, sort of middle most position and that's basically it, just do that for all four and then put it through the back of the motherboard you will have to be careful when installing this one because there's no there's no way that this actually holds itself to the motherboard it doesn't attach until you actually put the cooler on uh, so you just need to be a little bit careful when installing the motherboard but I'll show you in just a second So now the back plate is on the motherboard and we've picked out uh, four screws. Check the uh, case manual for which ones you specifically need. Uh, the ones that basically fit in the standoffs. Uh, it's a very simple process of installing the motherboard. So um, I'm generally just holding it by the more solid components, trying not to hold on to it by, you know, small capacitors and stuff like that. Um, and generally speaking, you still put it in at an angle, um, but that's not too much of an issue. Just line up the holes at the back and then line up the holes with the uh, uh, standoffs that we've already installed, which in this case, this one just needs to be pushed quite a bit far uh, further in, and then we screw it in. So might need to use a little bit of force just to get this in because of the padded back plate, but uh, you know, generally try not to break your motherboard as you're uh, installing it. So let's give this a go. Right, I think the next thing we're going to install is the RAM because once we install a CPU cooler it's going to be a little bit in the way here so basically with RAM just take a look at where the notch is um, obviously make sure you have the right RAM in the first place uh, but in this case this is DDR4 uh, and you just line up the RAM in the slot uh, this uh, motherboard also has a, effectively a feature where you only have to make sure one side is properly clipped as such uh, but you just push it down on both sides evenly and that's pretty much it. It's a very simple, in fact, potentially one of the most simple installations, uh, but you do need to make sure that they are securely clipped in uh, and secure on both sides before you go any further. So that's pretty much RAM installed for you. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is the CPU cooler. So as you can see, I've done a few extra bits and pieces. So I've actually properly installed the CPU cooler. It's very simple. All you do is make sure that you take in the protective label off the bottom, put a little bit of thermal paste down, make sure you have the right bracket, drop it on and screw it. And that's just basically it. And obviously a couple of screws 
screws just through the fan. Um, the other thing to mention is that uh, I've also uh, plugged in the front panel headers, which is these ones here and obviously these smaller ones down there. It's a little bit of a pain. I ended up removing the RAM, so you might want to do that one uh, just straight away, you know, or whatever, uh, as soon as you put the motherboard in and have actually, you know, connected the fan to the front. Uh, but uh, yeah, otherwise, the next thing we're going to do is put the power supply in so that we can put all the power cables in. And then once that's in, we'll drop the graphics card in uh, and hopefully, and you know, fingers crossed and all, all will be fine. So uh, let's give that a quick shot. So just to give you a better sort of camera angle basically for this and to give you a proper explanation, I installed the CPU cooler with four screws uh, it's obviously going through the fan into the radiator and then I basically was sort of test fitting the power supply uh, and that sort of thing to get, get an idea of how to sort of set it up, especially since it's a very small and tight enclosure. I did also install the SSD, it's very simple, it's just four screws in the back of it with sort of rubber grommets that you then just place the SSD in onto the side of the case and uh, slot it down slightly until it locks in place. And then I put the front panel on and attached all of the front panel headers. Check the motherboard manual for where they specifically need to go, but they're fairly simple, they're just you know slots that go over metal pins. Uh, and then I basically installed the CPU cooler. Big main thing for this is to make sure you take the protective cover, the, the sticky plastic, off of the the bottom of the CPU cooler and then just put a dab of uh, heatsink goop uh, that comes with the uh, the uh, CPU cooler thermal paste as it's more efficiently known uh, and then uh, when I was installing the power supply because it's such a tight and small enclosure cable management really isn't that great here I also had a little bit of trouble installing the 24 pins since the angle that it's at can make it a little bit difficult and then installing the graphics card I basically just moved everything out of the way all of the pipes and wires out of the way and then just dropped it in I made sure that the little PCIe lock was out of the way pushed it in connected the power cable and then that was basically it and as you can see it does actually work I installed Windows I personally have uh, USB sticks with plenty of copies of uh, different versions of Windows on them since I install Windows quite a lot these days uh, and then I installed uh, all the drivers and the games that I'll speak about in just a second now to give you an idea of performance, this thing is actually pretty awesome. At 10 EP it scores pretty well in 3D Mark Fire Strike and in actual gameplay I was easily seeing it over a sort of 100 FPS type figure for uh, stuff like Dirt Rally. Uh, in fact Dirt Rally on Ultra Settings was 110 FPS. It was actually 76 at 1440p as well which is very playable and at 4K it does struggle a little bit as you can expect with a GTX 1060, but since this is definitely aimed at the 1080p, 1440p uh, sort of area anyway, uh, I am very pleased with the overall performance. GTA 5 did a great job at 121 FPS at uh, very high settings. Doom on ultra settings, uh, this is actually on OpenGL, uh, was at 160 FPS, and likely Vulcan will be a little bit better as well. And on Unigen Heaven as a synthetic benchmark, I got 105 FPS at 1080p and 60 FPS at 1440p. So. Again, very impressive results. So after my internet connection finally allowed it, I was able to install Windows, update the drivers and uh, install my game as well. If you've never installed Windows, it's fairly simple. I use a USB stick personally and just plug it in when you power on the PC, press F12 to be able to select which device you want to boot from. Make sure you install Windows to the right hard drive. It's fairly simple, just clicking next, generally speaking. Um, but I actually added a hard drive to the, the sled on the top as well after uh, filming so that I could actually install some games. I recommend that too and I'll leave a link uh, to uh, a few different options for uh, all the parts down below. Which, by the way, if you are planning on building this, please do use the Amazon affiliate links. It genuinely helps me out and makes uh, people like Gigabyte and Cooler Master know that they should do more of these projects with me. So, uh, please do use those, or at least just uh, you know click them and see what you think. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, installing Windows, as I said, fairly, fairly simple, just pressing next. Uh, I definitely recommend you uh, download, uh, use another PC or a laptop or whatever to download the newest versions of the drivers from Gigabyte's website and from NVIDIA's website for the graphics drivers and just use those straight away as opposed to using the disks that come with the, the motherboard as they're generally pretty outdated drivers and obviously you need the disk drive as well, which this PC currently doesn't have. Um, so uh, that's my recommendation there. Also just make sure, especially if you run Windows 10, to make sure that you're completely up to date with all Windows updates. There's a pretty big performance difference between, uh, you know, 10, uh, from the early version of Windows uh, 10 to the, the sort of newest ones. Um, of course my screen decides to turn off, but uh, anyway, um, yeah, basically uh, just make sure you're up to date on everything, especially graphics drivers and motherboard drivers as well. 
Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, installing games is again fairly simple, we just recommend using Steam. As you've seen, the performance from this PC is really impressive, uh, especially at 1080p, it's a fantastic gaming machine, uh, and even if you want to run a 144Hz monitor with this, you do have the power to do that, which is awesome. Uh, other than that, uh, obviously at 1440p, it's still pretty good. 4K, technically you can do this, although do bear in mind that there is a 1070 version of this card available. So if you are planning on you know, having this as a uh, 4K living room PC, if you have a nice 4K TV, then uh, you can go for the 1070 version, which obviously is a bit more pricey, but at the same time has a good bit more performance. So you're able to run at the sort of high settings at 4K at 60 FPS, as opposed to this one, which is going to be running at sort of 30 FPS uh, on those ultra or high settings. So uh, if you do want to use this specific spec at 4K, you could turn it down to medium and it'll probably be just fine for you. But that's my, my recommendation there. Obviously this PC being uh, sort of very small, I was expecting the temperatures to not be that great, but the graphics card was running uh, about 70 degrees, I think it maxed out at 75 degrees, which is fantastic for a, a, a you know, GPU this size. And the CPU was actually, I think, about 40 to 50 degrees under gaming load, so again, I was very impressed with that. One little note though is that the CPU cooler I have, I don't know where it's the, you know, whether it's a uh, you know, just the specific model I have, but um, the pump was quite loud, so I do recommend perhaps going for one of uh, Coolmaster's other options that would fit in this case, and feel free to you know tweet at them if you need to make sure you uh, you know know which one is which. But uh, yeah, other than that, uh, as I said, I'm really impressed with it. The, the size of the case actually does fit in a lot of your sort of cabinet type, uh, you know, under TV um, setup. So, you know, next to your cable box or your sky box or whatever. So that's really cool. And obviously, if you do want to take it around with you, it's, it's, uh, the size means that it's actually fairly portable. Uh, so if you want to take it to your friend's house or whatever and hook up to his TV, uh, that's uh, perfectly possible. So that's pretty cool. And the fact that you can, uh, you know, use uh, an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift with it as well. Obviously, it's in VR ready. Um, so that's pretty cool too. Other than that, uh, I guess that's, that's kind of it really. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I love having a chat with you about uh, tech and all that sort of stuff, and it's just nice to know that you guys enjoy the video. So if you do, please do leave a comment and let me know. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the like button. If you didn't like it, feel free to hit the dislike button, but let me know why in the comments down below too, so that I can improve for next time. Um, also, feel free to follow us on Facebook and Twitter for updates, so if you want to just uh, you know, let me know any uh, other projects you'd like to see me do, um, feel free to let me know on there or in the comments down below too. And uh, yeah, and that, as I said, please do use that Amazon affiliate links, even if you're not buying these systems, there's uh, a general link down there for you as well, um, just so that you genuinely help me out. It, it does actually help pay the bills for rent and electricity and that sort of stuff. So. Um, that's uh, that's awesome and uh, yeah on that thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the project let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below and I'll see you all in the next video